Hey, let's delve deeper into lesson number 35. Now, we read that Satan is released from the abyss and he rallies millions to rebel against God. Have you ever wondered where such an army come from? Since Jesus obviously has been reigning for a millennium, according to the narrative. I mean, because of the judgments that have befallen those who align themselves with the beast, we got to ask, well, isn't just believers left? Well, one way we can understand where these rebellious nations come from is that it fits with the Old Testament prophets. For example, Psalm 83 sees that the nations are plotting against God's people. Come, they say, let us destroy them as a nation and so that Israel's name is remembered no more. Now, we're familiar with Ezekiel 38, 14, where God comes against the people of God, but only to be destroyed. Zechariah 12, 3, on the big day, I'll turn Jerusalem into a huge stone, blocking the way for everyone. And all who try to lift it will rupture themselves. And all the pagan nations will come together and try to get rid of it. So John, again, completes the expectations of the Old Testament with this final purge. Now, there, there, there's a... There, there's another possibility that, that comes from reflection on, on the lament of the merchants in Revelation 18. And, and this suggests that um, everyone gets caught up, not everyone, not everyone gets caught up in the judgments upon Babylon, the beast, and the false prophet. So it's from that lineage of those who are not caught up in that conflagration that, that the other nations come. But really, what's important here is instead of trying to figure out where these rebels come from what what's really most important is to see that there is a final purge of anyone who will not be loyal now only the faithful and the true partake in the new heaven and the new earth and the new jerusalem and so my friends spiritually stay frosty